Hello guys, it's Ian and welcome to The Real Deal. Today I wanna show you how to make this cool slippery movement that can be used in any 2D game. We'll be obviously using Unity Game Engine and C Sharp programming language. Without further ado, let's start with making a new project. I name it Top Down Movement. While it is launching, I guess I will pick up my children from school. First of all, we'll change lame camera settings and create a generic 2D object that will act as a player, sort of. I create a, a generic sprite that will be used as, as a player. I then add a new C Sharp script and a rigid body to the component. Let's hop to the Visual Studio. We delete both pre made functions because we are the real deal and we do everything ourselves. I add a public rigid body component, RP, as well as two vectors to D, we'll use for moving the character. Also, we'll need a set of boolean type values. Move W, move A, move S and move D. Let's make them false at the start. They will indicate the direction in which the acceleration should apply. Oh yeah, and two floats that will hold values for maximum speed and current speed of the player. We create two functions, update and fixed update. The main difference is that the update is executed every frame, while fixed update is executed every time the physics engine needs it. The rule of a thumb is to gather control input from the player in the update method. Uh, Method. Method. While put all the calculations of movement in the fixed update method. It is good to practice, however, in simple projects it may seem like overdoing things. So, well, you can do it this way or put everything in the update functions. Uh, if your game is big though, I suggest you use this method. Your call, guys. So, yeah, after putting a few comments, I insert a few if statements where I check which button was pressed by the player. If the player presses the button, the flag is marked as true and when they release it, the flag is marked as false. We do it for every button. Here we can also change the buttons or provide others like arrow keys. Next on to the other, so the fixed update and movement. The point of using an order is to distinguish between what we want to do versus what is currently happening. For example, when you are driving a car, you have some velocity and the momentum is built. When you press the brake, the car starts slowing down, but it does rarely go immediately in the reverse direction. This is what happens in a typical top-down game. The player has no momentum. You can change the direction near an instant without any drawbacks. Have you ever tried running towards something, then immediately bouncing back? I mean me neither, but it sounds like every top-down game ever. In the order vector, we set the speed of a particular axis we want to achieve. For example, if we press up, the order vector should be set to value pointing in that direction. Meanwhile, the movement vector is to be increased every iteration until it is equal to the order vector. We do that for every direction. Once the order is set, the first part is done. Now the time has come to execute order 66. You are the chosen one! I hate you! 
I'm sorry, I truly am. We check if the movement vector of particle axis is equal to the order vector and change it respectively. If you are following me while coding, be sure not to mess with the signs and write pluses and minuses correctly. I will probably move the code to a repository in the near future, so don't worry. However, uh, yep. Last but not least, is to update the position. We do it either by changing the position manually, like I do here, or by changing the position through rigid body component. Both ways are pretty much equal. Remember to use time fixed delta time in fixed update method. Method. Uh, instead of time delta time like in normal method, normal update method. Now let's see our results. I can already feel the inertia, yet you cannot see it. So I'll use a simple trick to show you the movement vector so that you can see in which direction and at what speed the player is currently moving. Debug line works in 3D space, so you have to cast a 2D vector to a 3D one. It changes completely nothing, so yeah, do that. The white line is drawn each frame from the position of the player towards the end of the actual movement vector. Now let's add code that will act as a way of halting the player when the acceleration is off. Let's call it friction DLC because it acts like real friction. When no button is pressed, the player will stop by themselves after some time due to halting forces. Let's add some float variables in order to tweak it from outside and not leave hard-coded values in the code itself. It's another piece of good advice. Now we can see the final effect. I make it bigger so that you can see it better. It's really hard to keep it inside the screen, so don't yell at me. See how it looks when we replace the lame textures with some AAA high quality Microsoft Paint assets. Looks really cool. A bit of math and the effect is quite nice. It could be used in a game where movement on ice is involved, I guess. I mean the sky is the limit, so use your imagination. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video. So well, that's it. Yep. Nothing more. Just go away.